Christ. <laughs> God. Let's start. Let's start. Let's here. start it. Right. All right, we'll start here. Okay. We're, We're back. back. We're back. Opening up my protein shake. Oh, yeah. Got to get right for the podcast. For, full disclosure, we did this last night. And we just didn't post it because we sounded we, yeah, we, we were, were just zombie. like yeah yeah like bass okeechobee after yeah. the second day today's saturday yeah so today's saturday we did not make the cut so tournament's over tournament's over congrats to jesse mizell so this actually works out better because we could kind of talk about what happened the day we didn't get to fish yeah so we didn't really do a uh breakdown at all of what happened because after the first day I was dead tired and didn't feel good, and Nick was tired, so we just went to bed and we had to fish the next day. So, I guess we'll just kind of, I guess, go over how everything went. So, the first day, well, it's Jesse Mizell, winner. Yeah. You said that. Yeah. What did it take? Top 25. It took Oh yeah, 23.10 20. to make the 25 cut. So, we said originally, I think we said... Well, first of all, I think we said like 23 and a half or 24 pounds was going to be the big bag of day one. Yeah. And it was. It was like 23, <coughs> whatever, whatever Booby Bakewell had. And then we said 12 and a half pounds to make each day to make the top 25 cut. And it actually took less than that. It was yeah. like 20, well, it was 23.10 to make it. So it was just under that, but 12. I mean, 12 under, a day. under under twelve a day. Yeah, under twelve a day, which was crazy. Um, so we were kind of everyone was pretty much dead on with their uh, with their guesstimates, and it took twenty pounds and twelve ounces to get a check. Jason Blair got the last check. Really, he did. So, oh yeah, I saw ten Greg. and a half pounds a day to get a check. Ten and a half pounds to get paid on Okeechobee. That sounds like something like that we all, all of us locals like joke about the before one of our tournaments. Like, ten pounds will get you a check when everyone's just beating around the bush and like, yeah, miserable and like. But if we all really know it's not going to take. But it really took that. So that's what was crazy. So the first day, <clears throat> I had probably the worst day I've ever had on Okeechobee. I really think that I had four fish for six one. Six pounds, one ounce, and I had one fish at noon. And I made a run and I ended up catching three more keepers. And going in, like I was just miserable. I was mad. I was upset with myself. Because I like I said, I mean, I, I really thought like part of me was like, well, six is at least you caught something, and I think it's gonna be really tough, so it's just Less weight you have to catch tomorrow or whatever. You can make it up tomorrow. But then the other part of me was like, it's Okeechobee. These guys are all going to catch them. You probably they, thought you were out of it. I did. Well, I thought it was just like, yeah. I mean, yeah, this you is, were like. But the weights were actually worse terrible. than I thought. Yeah. And um, it was crazy. You had 13-2. 13-2. And you were in? 26. 26th place with 13 pounds. On Okeechobee, out of 207 boats, 13 pounds would literally get you in, like, we'll say, like, the top 50. Usually. Right? 75? Yeah. I mean. It all depends. It just all depends. Yeah. But, yeah, typically, if, the, if they're biting. Yeah. Like, 13 pounds would be, like, top yeah. 60 or yeah, something. Yeah, something like, like that. that. And he was in. You were in 26. 26. Right. And. What's crazy about that is, though, you were in 26 with 13, but I think eight, 17 pounds was third. Yeah. Like, the weights were so stacked. And it's crazy on Okeechobee <clears throat> because we're on a big fish fishery. So, like, well, first of all, also, like, I came in with six pounds, and I was just like, this is stupid but so many of like the best fishermen on the lake had even less or just around there like justin morgan had eight pounds jared mcmillan had eight pounds chris Sherling had three pounds i think bradley mcqueen had four pounds val Lazinski had 7 11 yeah it was 
So when it comes down to it, like I had six pounds, Nick had 13, and he's one spot outside the cut. That's literally one bite on this lake. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, yeah. yeah, nobody was out of it. No one was. And you like, were not out of it. No, and, and we were all saying like, what, you know, that's literal, literally. Well, and it's not like we're on a fishery where it's like, oh, well, they live here. Like this time of year, you could catch a six pounder is valuable, but it's not like it's uncommon to catch one. Right. So it was like, all right, well, um, 23, whatever was leading, it's over now. So, I mean, but we knew Bobby was in the river. Yep. And then other than that, like everyone I talked to just said the lake was, uh, it was terrible. I know I talked to Hunter Weston. He might have been lying to me. He might not have. I don't know because it was the we still had a day to fish. So I'm not saying he's lying to me because he was being an ass. He probably just didn't want to say where he was. But I I, can't, I believe what he told me. He said he ran all the way to the river, fished till one o'clock, never had a bite, and made five stops at five small spots on the way back to the ramp, on the way in. Like, these little pockets of clean water, and he had one bite in each of them. That's how he had his almost 18 pounds. So I got completely Dang. lucky. Um, I don't know. I didn't talk to anybody who felt good about what they caught or confident or anything. I think he struggled today, Hunter West. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, even you. Still a good tournament. Sh- sh- Better yeah. than us. Hell yeah, yeah. And you, like, you're the – you were someone I was kind of wor- you know, thought was going to do better because of the spot you had. I'm like, he's going to go in there and catch another 12 pounds, but you just didn't get. Bit. I didn't even go there. Oh, oh, oh the first yeah, spot. Yeah, the first yeah. spot. Well, I had the bites to have it. Oh, really? I lost that. Yeah, I lost that one. Oh, that was hooked yeah. on the side. I lost oh. like a three and a half, four pounder. Like that's... right, right at the boat, it came off, and <coughs> I. It was like a. Split second react like I had the fish and it was hooked in the side on a fluke. And I went to boat flip it and it ripped out. It ripped out. Came it's, off. It's very my un- guy didn't have the net and like it was like the split second decision. Yeah. Like, what do I do here? I'm not gonna f- play this fish out. Yeah. Especially in the cover you're in and stuff. And it came off and as soon as that happened, I was like, There's a cut. I was like, that's gonna cost me something. And it's not on it's very uncommon. It's not uncommon for a four pound fish like that to like cost you something on Okeechobee, but it's usually yeah. when you have you already have like two sixes and a and a five in your live well where that happens. Like where a four pounder is that important. But in this case, a four pounder would have brought you from well, you I needed were, a pound and a half to make the cut. Right. So it gave me like just over two pounds. You'd have made the cut. You would have jumped that many, and you got, and he got. You landed in fortieth place. Yeah. So that four, that's how small the bags were. Well, you missed the cut by. I missed the cut by ten ounces, and I did only had four fish on day one. You catch one bass on the first day. One more fish, twelve inches long. You make it. Yeah, and I lost the I lost the fish that would have put me. I, dude, everybody did. Yeah, everybody. But like did. that's crazy. And then to have a shot, you know, Jesse and and Brandon. Medlock, they fished a totally different lake today. Right, no and, wind, and, and we would we would have had all that too. You know, Jared caught him. Everyone caught, and I we all said it. We I, I told I talked to Val Lazinski at the boat ramp one morning in practice, and I said us locals need to get lucky day one and day two and make it into the final day because the final day is when you're going to get to go fishing. Yeah, um, that's what I was looking forward to, yeah, and it didn't happen. So I had six one. Didn't even want to go fishing the next day. Woke up. Nick's like, dude, you're not out of it. Just go fishing. Of course, when I got out to the basin, we're BSing with everybody. You get all fired up. Ran to my spot. Again, I don't know how this happened. Like, I don't have any excuses for having six pounds day one. I literally got to fish everywhere I wanted to fish. There was no one in my way. There wasn't, I didn't lose them. Like, it was great. There was one guy. You were in his way, apparently. That was yesterday. Yeah. So the second day. Yeah, but that was like. Oh, you're talking about the first day. Yeah. The, oh. the se- in the second day, like, yeah, one guy said, like, I could, I don't know. He, I could hear him talking shit that I was like, 
Anyway, my man, get into yeah, it. But yeah. I get to my first spot, and again, I have it all to my. There was boats, but I could. That wasn't prohibited on what I could do, and um, I had almost seventeen pounds yesterday. So it jumped me up a hundred spots. Yeah, that's wild, dude. It was nuts, and I missed the cut. I got thirty fifth place, which is ten spots from the cut, and I missed it by ten ounces. That's how stacked the weights were. Which was crazy. That is crazy. Nuts. Nuts. You could have had like two dead fish and missed the cup because of it. Or a dead fish. A dead fish. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how this it was, deal is. Yeah, it was it was an Okeechobee like we're not used to seeing for sure. But we, um, I don't know. And you had what yesterday? Nine pounds. Nine, Nine two. Pounds. Nine two. And you still, we both made it out with a check. We did get paid. We got paid. So that worked. But... It was just like for me. First day, I caught one fish on a frog, three flipping mats. My whopping six pounds yesterday, I caught fish. I'll post like my little highlight deal from yesterday after this video. Um, I caught them on a chatterbait, a frog, one on a swim jig, and flipping mats. So I caught them just junk fishing. So. Yeah. Oh, mine came on a fluke. Yeah. Gambler super stud. Boring fishing. <laughs> and a spook. <coughs> I caught a few on a spook, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. In the starting spot? Yeah. Really? Yep. That's cool. I tried to make the spook thing work. I never had a bite on it. Um, Actually, yesterday, I caught quite a few on it. Hmm. It was like 50-50. Like half came on a spook, half on a fluke. Because really? as soon as I started get, stop getting bent on a spook, I picked the fluke up and get bit. Oh yeah, fucking. Or excuse my French. It don't matter. The, we, um, the fluke gets bit. It gets bit. But it's, I threw it. It's, it's I had them. It was crazy. They were my fish, and and this is the other thing too. Like again, like I'm not defending the lake, but I am. The, we've had so much boat pressure on this lake over the past three months between tournaments, recreational anglers, guides, you name it. More boat pressure than I've ever seen. A lot of it's because the lake's fishing so small, so everyone's crammed. But yeah. it's been nuts. And the fish, when you when the fish first move in, they're dumb. They're coming off the main lake. They don't. They just eat. But after they get acclimated to those boats, it definitely it, it was crazy. Like I'm fishing this area, and boats are literally like running the fish over, and but they literally like run them over. And a lot of the fish where I was were keyed in on very small bait. I Ooh, mean minnows. minnows like this. That's why they and, were eating that fluke? Yeah, exactly. I couldn't get them to eat the fluke down there though. But I think it was because they were so dialed in. And they were so pressured. They just, I mean, you'd see a minnow jumping out of the water and think, ah, oh, it's a dinker. And, I, and then, I mean, the boils on these minnows were crazy. Dude, it's crazy because this time of year, I've seen this on this lake. I've seen them get dialed into on those, the minnows. On those on minnows. the back yeah. mat lines and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And yes. you can't catch them. Or you no. could, you can. You need like a little fluke. Well, you heard, or like did, a little. Did I tell you what Ronnie Buck said? What? So, well, he ain't going to care. But Ronnie Buck was down there, and I said, he ended up squeezing out a check. <laughs> and, well, I'll go back to that in a second. But we picked, we kind of thought Ronnie Buck was going to win the damn thing. Yeah. He was on them. But he told us at the meeting, he's like, I'm not even excited because these fish move so much on this lake. And they did. He had two fish day one, Yeah, I think. But I, I talked to him at the weigh-in yesterday. He's like, we caught, between the two of me and my calling, we caught like 50 fish. I was like, really? He goes, Jeez. dude. He was throwing an underspin with a one on EWG hook and a white gambler, little easy. No way. Or it might have even been a teasy. I mean, a bait this big. On a spinning like, rod? He threw it on a spinning rod. I, and, and had to have. You can't throw it on a big gas and, rig, yes. and Ron might have done it also. He's like, dude, you just throw it and we call 40, 50 fish. But that's what, because you have to imitate. If we went out. Down south tomorrow with a beetle spin, we'd probably catch 100 fish. Yeah. And I'm not talking 100, like, decent fish. They're keyed in on these little baits. Um, 
So that was a deal. Boat pressure. Um, and then, you know, today... They came in, right? They came in. And not only did they come in, but there was only 25 tournament boats on the lake. Right. People had more room to move around. I mean... Less wind. You could fish some areas that... You, you couldn't know. fish in the tournament. Yeah, and even, like, on this lake, when the wind blows all the water to one side of the lake, and then that all of a sudden stops, it creates, like, it, like that backflow. Yeah. It actually can create current, but all that... The yeah. water will fall. Or in, and it'll, it, yeah, and it'll clean, the, it'll clean, clean up, it up sometimes pretty fast. Yeah, and I think that's probably what... We weren't out there. That's probably yeah. what happened. And, like, the guy who ended up winning it, he ended up... He caught... Well, he caught two fish where you were going to fish because yeah. you guys were sharing water. I mean, you just had, again, but that, who knows? Like, I'm not saying you would have caught one of well, Chrissy's fish. it's all about decisions, and I, yesterday I made bad decisions. Right. I didn't even go there because I thought I was going to be blown out. And I don't know if he caught him in there, but, like, right. I mean, everything went his way. Yeah. No, I mean, he's one of the best on the lake. Dude. Yeah. I mean, he's going to catch him. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, it – us as locals, like we don't really have, we have an advantage. I think we had more of an advantage for the two days because when the lake's not fishing, it's typical way we had like little back pocket stuff. We oh, go catch little yeah. fish, which helped. But then like on a day like tomorrow or yesterday or today it was when it's like the wind stopped blowing and a wave of fish is coming in. Like we know where to be. You could have went to like your outside fish you had on a jig and, Caught and just and I'm I don't know how Brandon Medlock caught him. But he caught over 25 pounds today. Yeah, I mean, oh, what's funny is my last good fish yesterday. I caught like a four and a half, and um, as soon as that fish got in the boat, I was like, I told my co-anger, I said, "Look how different this fish looks." Said, this is a lake fish. I said, "They're coming in." I don't know why. This is what we were talking about in the first one. They'll just pull. We there's. We're There's not on no a moon. reason. There's no moon. There's no weather change. Yeah. They just, here they come. And I said, I'm like, if I make it, because I was still on the fence, like, dude, I could make it tomorrow. It's going to not just necessarily be a smash fest for me, but the lake's going to pop off. And I don't know if it quote unquote popped off, but I mean, Jesse had 22. And I mean, Medlock had, it, it was a hell of a lot better today than it was. For biggest the bag of the tournament. Yeah, and several large bat like and you got Jared had tw almost twenty one. Yeah, Jesse had almost twenty two and a half. And Alex Brandon Tarasenko said he had a chance at a giant bag and lost him. He said he lost him the whole tournament. Just had a bad tournament. Yeah. So I don't know. That's what we talk about on this lake. Like these fish, there's no other lake where these fish behave the way they do on this one. There's no rhyme or reason why these fish should have moved in, but they like, I'm not fishing tomorrow, but it's probably going to be stupid out there tomorrow. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Next week on Monday, your next trip. Yeah, it'll but be. But, like, if this tournament, you know, like you did that photo dump, to, I don't know if you were artificial or shiner fishing. All artificial. But yeah, then if this tournament was last week. Oh, it would have been 90 pounds. Yeah, everybody would be talking about, it would be a totally different subject. Yes. I think even with all the boats on the lake, it would have been a. Yeah. It wouldn't so, have been like not ninety pounds. That's kind of thirty a day. But I mean, dude, twenty five a day. We'll be. Well, I don't know. You know the. You know best. I'm, dude. If it was last week, no, it would have been. You can't like seventy because here's the thing. It wasn't. The tournament would have started last Thursday. And it wasn't like fire until like Tuesday afternoon. Like it started. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I think like the locals, we could have like seen what we needed to see and be like, oh, and like left the areas alone. Yep. Whereas out of towners maybe wouldn't have figured it out. And then. Yeah, dude. You, I mean, it wouldn't. I mean, I'm not saying it would have happened. I, I mean, ninety pounds kind of crazy. But yeah, it could. have I mean, it could have taken seventy five. Right. There have been it was several. Crazy. It was crazy last bags. week. So that's just how this lake works. They're in and out. Um, and the biggest thing I think that hurt us this week was 
you couldn't fish where a lot of the fish were holding because of the dirty water. Dirty water was a big thing. Even like, well, Nick said, the reason he didn't go to his fish yesterday, he thought it was going to be blown out. Um, a lot of the water I, I tried to fish yesterday, I couldn't. I ended up at 10 o'clock, I went just for a boat ride for an hour. I told my co owner like, we're going for a ride. I don't know how long it's going to be. We didn't make a long run. I just cruised around looking at little sneaky things I had. A lot of water was dirty, but a lot of water was getting clean, too. Um, and that's what I mean. I knew today was going to be a much better day for – and not everybody caught them. I mean, the leader of the tournament, Bobby, he, but he was in the river. So I think he just caught everything that was on his spot. Yeah, sounds like it. And um, I heard he lost a fish. Oh, yeah, he lost He lost six. a fish to win, and I guess Skip did, too, his co angler. Yeah, Skip Reed – well, most of you listening probably know who Skip Reed is. He, what place did he end up in? Third. We're still going to hear about Skip's day one twenty pound bag out of the back of the boat for the next. Oh, I'll hear years. it. I'm, we're we're going to hear it tomorrow. Oh, he'll he'll be he'll be walking up to sign in like with his chest pumped out and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got a fish holiday park tomorrow in King of the Glades. I am not. But um, <coughs> yeah. So Jesse Mizell wins. I say it every podcast on Poppin' Frog. On a Spro Poppin' Frog. Um, I know I don't even have to ask him. I know that's what he caught him on. Did oh you, yeah. You listen to the Wayne, is that what he said he caught him on? He they the articles online. Major League Fishing. Oh really? Yeah. I mean I wanna know what if I wanna know if Medlock caught him on a jig. I almost want to message him. He might not tell me. He won't tell you. But I just want to know because it'd just make me so happy if he did. But if anyone's going to catch him on a jig, it'd be him. But I know he throws a frog, too. He yeah. went south yesterday. Did he? I followed him south. I didn't follow him south. See, I watched him weigh in. And he said he tried to... He knew the weather was going to be right. So he tried to scrap up everything he could to get slide into the cut. That's exactly what he did. That, that's exactly what we and all said. And smashed him on set. Smashed him today. That's, he's just good like that, man. He is. I mean, he's... he's the and I, I, I knew that, too. And we you, all did. We, uh, yeah. But my problem is, it's like... a local... Well, yeah, I mean, we knew. So I, I, and if we, I, I don't remember if we said it in the podcast or not, the first one, but we knew Saturday was going to be the day. But my whole problem is I can't lay up. I can't, like, go, okay. Maybe that's why I suck at multiple-day tournaments. I can't be like, all right, I just need to survive. See, I... Yeah. I can't I've learned that. to lay up a little bit. Like... Get in the cut. You it's can't. a, it's a dude. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. See, I'm not that way. I just try to. I and I. Nick told me to tell this the other night. My first thought of my first cast in my Toyota career. <laughs> I lay my trolling motor in the water day one. I pick up the frog, and my first thought was, "You're gonna zero today," which is I'm not. I'm a positive guy. I don't think like that. And I think part of it was. The conditions for where I was fishing. The reason I went to where I went is because I had giant bites there in practice. Not really, in, but guiding the week before. And the conditions were similar, but slightly different. We had them on an east-southeast wind. This was wow. blowing northeast, which I learned the hard way is a much different wind. That little degree change right there made a big difference. <laughs> and instead of just like... Wild. Making slight adjustments and just trying to catch a limit, I just swung for it until like almost one o'clock, and then I then it then panic set in, and that's when I scrambled. I ran like ten different spots, and I ended up catching my my next three little dinkers. And if I probably would have just laid up earlier, I probably would have fished today. Yeah. But see, you kind of. You see, you knew that because you said, I'm going to go here because I know you said, I'll, I'll leave there with like 10 pounds. Yeah. So I'm going to go catch a limit. To, right. And go head hunting. Right. See, and I, I just went straight head hunting. And then what happened the next day is I was forced to do nothing but go head hunting. And I did. Right. But the conditions on yesterday were the exact way I had the bites in practice. And Florida bass are, we always say all the time, they're fickle. They're very sensitive. So the wind was blowing in like this instead of like 
this. Yeah. And that literally made the biggest difference ever. And some fish pulled in. And fish pulled in. But that was it. So Jesse Mizell wins. I'm glad. No, no offense to Bobby Bakewell, but it's not because I didn't want him to win. I didn't want the river to win another one. Right. The exactly. Hell the river. Yeah. There's big. You fish can have in the it. Lake. Yeah, you can have it. I want to catch them on a frog or a jig like a man. Exactly. Or just zero. 17 a day? That's what it ended up being. 17 and change? 17 and really? a half a day? Yeah, pretty sure. Well, we were right again. Yeah. We called that. Every, and it wasn't just me and Nick. Like, every local was pretty – everyone I talked to. It's funny. I texted – me and Chris Sherling were texting last night. And I said, um, you know, Bobby – Said he only had seven bites yesterday or today, so he's worried about it tomorrow. And, you know, I said, but the lake is going to set up right. And, uh, you know, Dylan Mc... – I mean, there was – it was all hammers in the top 25. Yeah. I'm like, Dylan Mc... I said, Dylan's on him. Tarasenko's on him. And uh, Jesse went into it in fourth, right? Yeah, and I didn't know Jesse was in fourth. I thought he was further down, and Chris was like, no. Nah, Jesse's going to catch 25 and win. He only yeah. caught 22 and a half, right? But he won it. So super happy for him. Great guy and uh, always does good on this lake. Yeah, so. he's a hammer. He puts his time in. Yeah, and he's like just – it was funny he's too. He's been guiding, right? Yeah, and he guides. Yeah. I, I, anyone who listens, I send it. If, if I'm ever booked, I send you Jesse's number. He's a good dude. Yeah. Um. It was crazy the morning of day one at the takeoff. I was next to him, Chris, Val, a couple people. And we were all just like, yeah, like, you know, not being negative, but just like we were struggling. And he, I told Breezy on the way home today, I'm like, he wasn't even like, there was not a, not that we were being negative, but he was just like, no, you know. Unfazed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like he's just, just like no, like it's Okeechobee. We're like, I'll catch him, and he he caught him. So he did fifty thousand worth. Is that how much he won? Fifty. Damn, they didn't give us six. Well, there wasn't two hundred and seventy boats. Right. There was two hundred and seven boats. Still, you're not going to complain about. Hey, people. yeah. Can't and I know he's building a house, G's. and he's leading the points. And you guys go to Ufala next. Yep. He's been there, I'm pretty sure, too. I haven't been there, so that'll be interesting. Yep. <laughs> if, they, <coughs> if they eat a frog, he's going to do good. So They will. Yeah, they eat it there? There's a, there'll be a shad spawn and then brush piles. It'll be an offshore deal. They'll be throwing a popping frog in 30 feet of water, calling them off a brush pile. <laughs> yeah. That'd be gas. You know it. Yes. All right. So that was our wrap-up. Nick's got a yeah. fish tomorrow. We're both still dead tired. He woke up and went home and did home stuff and then came back because I'm closer to Holiday Park. Yep. And uh, I was off today but ran around doing stuff, and I'm off tomorrow. Might actually sneak out on the lake tomorrow afternoon, possibly with Breezy if it works out, and try to film because I think tomorrow is going to be good. And if my customer for Monday is watching, I don't even know who it is. I don't know. I haven't looked at my book in three days. It's probably going to be good, I would think. This whole week should Gotta set up to be good. Yeah. yeah. So appreciate you guys watching. Cool. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. Later. Later. I'm definitely going to get a treble hook in my back right now. Nope. Nope. You did not. We're good.